Dear ladies and gentlemen, we are living in a world with limited resources. And our way of living is creating quite some challenges. Some challenges that have the risk of endangering the sustainability of our world. Now we are convinced that the technologies we're all working on, semiconductor-based uh, technologies, that they can contribute to a large extent to addressing some of these fundamental challenges. So that's why I've entitled uh, my presentation Semiconductors, Core of, an ama Core of a Sustainable, Amazing World. First of all, before I start, I would like to thank Cadence and the organizers for giving me the opportunity to give this presentation to you and to share with you some of our visions. So I've built up this presentation in two main parts. In the first part, I will start with sharing with you some of our visions on how we believe some of the applications will evolve and what will be the key drivers in our industry. You will see a lot of synergy with some of the messages that have been given before. In the second part, I will talk about the technology that will enable all these fabulous applications. So let's start from the drivers in our industry. Clearly, all of the applications in the domain of ICT have been, driven, have been driven, uh, driving our industry, and it's clear that we all want to be connected at any place, at any time. Our desire for data is kind of unstoppable, as clearly evidenced by the tremendous increase in mobile data traffic over the last couple of years. Indeed, cell phones are everywhere. Can you imagine that five billion cell phones are in use today, just compared to the number of people on this planet. It's amazing. Our cell phones have become such sophisticated computers. Who would have thought a few years ago that we would be carrying around a computer in our pocket with a processing power, uh, with a processing speed of more than 1.5 gigahertz? It's phenomenal. Now, the cell phones do not, the smartphones do not only contain very powerful multi-core processors, we've also integrated a lot of intelligence through all these sensors. Cell phone not only has very sophisticated ears, multiple microphones, it has very sophisticated eyes, high-definition cameras, multiple cameras for 3D, front and back. The cell phone also feels, it has a touch screen, it feels motion, gyroscope, accelerometer, Kind of the only sense that is missing in the phone is the sense of smelling. Well, it is going to be possible to integrate an electronic nose in the phone. Now, you may wonder why would we want our phone to smell? Well, it can become a device for safety monitoring. Um, measure CO2, CO levels. When we walk around in the city, giving signals to asthmatic patients, well, you better don't stay out uh, too long. Or measure alcohol levels in our breath to, uh, to give a message, well, you better don't drive under those conditions. So we are developing concepts for an electronic nose, which is nothing more than a very sophisticated gas sensor, and it can be done using cantilever-based MEM systems, and this indeed could be one of the next devices to be added to our smartphone. In this way, we are kind of adding more and more functionality to this phenomenal device. Now, with all these sensors and all the data that this, these sensors can collect, we can also make these smartphones smarter. Very soon, we will be correlating our data from where we are, where we're going to, with the content in our phone, with the information in our calendars, uh, with how the phone is used, to the communication threads, and this indeed will make those phones smarter and smarter. They will become context-aware, they will become true personal assistant. They will become the devices with which we will, do, uh, we will make most of our payments, using, for example, near-field communication. A very interesting application is this uh, trend towards inline, uh, online shopping. Uh, this uh, uh, slide shows a virtual store in a metro station in uh, Korea, where basically the shopping is done by um, uh, downloading some of the QR codes on some of the displays in, in this metro station, and uh, uh, the goods are then being delivered to, to the homes. 
Now, communication, the amount of communication is going to increase further, and, and wideband communication is going to, uh, to become important. 60 gigahertz uh, or, uh, will be essential in order to realize these new applications of uh, uncompressed video distribution at home uh, or um, uh, fast download of gigabytes of uh, uh, data uh, for, um, at video kiosks, for example. Now, 3D visualization is going to, uh, to give an additional dimension to the way we communicate. We will move towards a more virtual world where we will add uh, with immersive video, video technology, we will add a more real life experience to what we, we know now as telepresence technology. Step by step, we will move there. And it may sound like science fiction, but step by step, we get closer. In fact, a few weeks ago, on one of a, a concert in the uh, in US, uh, an artist which, who passed away like more than 15 years ago was brought back to stage, stage through a hologram. So we're getting there, and we are working on uh, uh, compact versions of these technologies, uh, uh, realizing holography, uh, holographic 3D projection using very sophisticated sub-micron uh, sub MEMS micromirror type of technologies. Now, if we want to deploy these um, concepts of interactivity and connectivity at e in, e in even more products, um, we may realize that through even cheaper technologies. If we can integrate like a system in a foil, bring intelligence just in plastic foil, this opens up so many new applications. Applications, um, and, and this, uh, the, a lot of progress has been made uh, possible, uh, has been realized in this domain. And we recently, in fact, uh, a little less than a year ago, we uh, announced uh, uh, the functioning of the world's first microprocessor fabricated completely in a plastic foil. Um, the complexity of this device is similar to the first microprocessors made in silicon. Um, now, these don't operate at the same speed, so by far they will not replace uh, microprocessors in our computers or, or smartphones, but it certainly demonstrates that there is a possibility to build in far more intelligence just in a plastic substrate. And this will enable applications such as uh, smart labeling, including sensors and displays in just a, pla a plastic package. It will enable smart signage uh, interacting with the environment, it will enable, um, through all that technology, um, uh, interactive shopping windows, uh, assisting the buyer with uh, their choices. Now, those are the typical application domains which we associate as being enabled with, uh, through semiconductors. Now, we believe that one of the domains where there is going to be a tremendous opportunity in the coming years are all these applications related to healthcare. And the easy way to get into this domain is by developing applications on the classical uh, appliances uh, that support a healthy lifestyle and wellness. But the true challenge is that we are living in a society that is aging so rapidly. And this is going to create a tremendous pressure on the cost of our healthcare system. By 2030, more than 1 billion people will be older than 65. And it goes very rapidly. Uh, over the next couple of years, the number of people older than 65 will outgrow the number of children younger than five by far. And this will create quite some changes. It will change the target groups for most of the applications, but as I said, it will also create a tremendous cost increase of our healthcare system. And today, our healthcare system is not the most efficient. In fact, we are using a big hammer approach for treating most of the illnesses. We're applying generic treatments, kind of average treatments for wide populations, not always tailored to the individual uh, requirements of, uh, of individual patients. And very often, our healthcare treatments are set up in a very reactive way. We go to the doctor, when first symptoms occur, and very often when it is far too late. So, this kind of healthcare systems is really not the most effective, and it is leading to excessive costs. So, it is time to really create a drastic change in this, 
um, and, and get us closer towards this uh, more personalized, more predictive, more preventive type of healthcare uh, and, and treatments. Now here, we can help, I think, by bringing together this, this enormous uh, capabilities of semiconductor technology with the tremendous knowledge that exists in the medical community. Electronics can provide far improved diagnostics, more precise monitoring, and that will be needed in order to bring us closer to this vision of personalized and predictive and preventive uh, medical treatments. One technology, one such technology is uh, shown here. We've been working on these concepts now for many years. A concept of body area networks consisting of wireless sensor nodes uh, realizing such a, a telehealth or a health monitoring system. This kind of technology will in fact allow for remote monitoring of patients, remote monitoring of elderly, patient, uh, of elderly people, uh, and in this way hopefully also reduce drastically the cost of healthcare by keeping people longer out of caring institutions. We have developed uh, a lot of concepts uh, uh, to demonstrate this, and this is an example of the world's first ultra-low power ECG system uh, using Bluetooth low energy. It uh, provides long-term home monitoring of cardiac patients, and it measures the ECG signal from three leads. Uh, it also has a 3D accelerometer to uh, uh, take away motion artifacts. It sends the data wirelessly to a smartphone from where the data can be streamed to a doctor's office who can monitor the patient from remote. Now, this is an example of an ECG device integrated in such a health patch. Um, and, and the health patch itself, of course, uh, is, uh, is uh, built out of electronics using ultra-low power technology. It contains a sensor, local processing power, so that, uh, uh, processing so that, we don't, uh, so that we minimize the amount of data that has to be sent through wa the wireless radio to the smartphone. All of it has to operate at ultra-low power in order to uh, assure sufficient autonomy. Like in this example, we, we achieve like 30 days autonomy. In a similar way, we can develop concepts for uh, wireless EEG and cephalogram uh, measurement, brain activity measurements. And obviously, all these devices send their data to the smartphone. It's not only about heartbeat or uh, ECG or EEG, uh, but you can connect many more sensors uh, to it um, and, and also correlate all these data then with the, the, the habits, uh, the way the, 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 the user is, is living. And in this way, we're again adding more and more functionality to the smartphone. It becomes a device with which we are going to measure and monitor the well-being of the individuals.